Hey everybody, David Nagel, welcome to another episode of the Successful Mind Podcast. Today we're talking about perception and will. Now I know that there's a lot of talk out there about people not having willpower, it's not a real thing. I want to give you kind of a different idea of what will is so you understand what it is, and by understanding what it is, you kind of understand what it's not so that you know how to use it. It's basically your ability to focus, okay? It's your ability to focus. The power to do anything is already here in the universe. That's not our individual power. That's that's whatever creates life in this universe is equally represented to all living things on the planet. Now, we have another very interesting intellectual faculty that allows us to really create our experience however we want it, and that's perception. Let's realize something. I want to kind of give you a breakdown of this because people often say to me, there's no way that I can go from where I am to being successful, to make quantum leaps without, you know, X, Y, Z, all this different stuff, without it being difficult and, you know, uh, just lineage after lineage of idea that you have to go through in order to make it happen. And simply, it's not true. It isn't true. Now, I wouldn't have believed that when I was younger, but I had that experience and it was the thing that prompted me into the industry that I am. I became so fascinated with how fast my life changed by just changing basically one idea that I had to know what I I had done because I knew that it wasn't a fluke and it wasn't luck. What I changed and what many people changed, and I've been helping people change now for 25 years, is their perception of the world around them and their perception inside themselves. Now, why would this be so important? Well, our experience is the equivalent of what we perceive it to be. And what we perceive it to be is very much based on the internal subconscious meanings that we've got attached to everything. I mean, from the moment of conception, you were just had it drilled into your your little mind what everything means, right? And by your parents, people that surrounded you. We grew up in a culture, right? And more of a microculture in the idea of who your parents and who your family were. That's why you could have somebody that's born in another country uh, that doesn't even speak, say, English. And you put put them with an English family and they'll grow up speaking fluent English. You could have somebody who's born, say, in America, and you you raise them from infancy you know, with a Chinese family and they'll speak fluent Chinese. We become the environment that we're in and that we're exposed to on a regular basis, period. It's also, make a note of that, later I'm going to talk a little bit about the idea of how you have to change your environment in order to support the growth of where it is that you want to go. That's absolutely essential also. But let's get back to this idea of meaning. When human beings started to walk in the face of this big, blue, wonderful planet that we're on, we weren't handed a book, a textbook, you know, a dictionary, an encyclopedia, computers that said, here's what everything on the planet is, and here's what it means, and here's what it can do, and here's what it can't do, and here's who you are, and what you mean, and what you can do, and what you can't do. That was created by human beings over thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years. We are basically the offspring of those individuals, right? Everybody here, I mean, if you're alive here, every person on the planet goes back to original human beings in one way or another. That's where our lineage ties back to. So it's thousands, if not millions or billions of lineages that led to you and the meanings that they acquired in their life to support the surrounding cast of what they experienced. And it was passed on from one generation to another. What's important about that is that the meanings that we were given, it's not just our internal representation of what everything in the world is, but it's also the social construct of how we live and our uh, uh, the family dynamic, you know, if you will. It gets so much so that it's attached to our identity. You know, if you're raised in a family and they tell you this is what everything means, you're probably not going to be very welcome to go too much outside of that box without some severe pushback by the family. And not that it's um, a bad or nefarious thing. It's just that that's what people do, right? They have a very stringent set of beliefs. They try to raise their kids with the same beliefs to some degree. And if the kid wanders too far in the other direction, they try to bring that kid, right? They kind of bend them toward their will, their focus in life, so to speak. And 
that's important because then if you if you if you grow up and you're having problems in your life and you don't know why, you think that you might have to go through all different kinds of study and therapy and changing and everything in order to change your experience. And while some of that stuff is definitely beneficial, what does it all come down to at the end? Whether you have a coach or a therapist or a doctor or a friend or a priest or whoever it is that it might be, it comes down to somewhere, somehow you start to change your perception of your experience so that allows you not to be stuck and actually begin to move forward in your life. And when you're changing your perception, what you're really doing at the core is you're giving something that you're experiencing a completely different meaning. One that that goes from keeping you in a box that's stuck to one that lets you open the door and walk out into a more free life. So basically, we've got two kinds of people walking the planet today. You have people that are aware that they have the ability to do that, right? That's a level of consciousness. To be able to go, you know something, I'm going to take responsibility for everything in my life, and I'm going to determine what means what so that I can do whatever it is that I desire to do. That's one level of consciousness. Another level of consciousness is people that are raised without the awareness of that, and they're raised with a victim mentality. Now, victim mentality is basically... No representation of the fact that they have the ability to choose, to create their own meanings, and by that, they can dictate their own life the way that they want it. They're raised in an environment where everybody's blaming everything and everyone else on the experience that they're having. So there's a lack of awareness there. They really don't understand that they've got the power to change it, no matter who, what family lineage they were born into, no matter where they are in the world. The thing that has to flip in a person's mind in order to change their life in any significant way is that they have to understand that they hold the power inside of themselves to actually change their distinctions and make them mean something else, which will open the door to whatever opportunity they could possibly want in their life. A person who is in a victim mindset Not only do they not see that, they won't believe this either. They'll be like, that's complete nonsense. Of course, a victim mindset is designed to keep a person within that very strict belief system. And the only way I've ever seen anybody get out of it, including myself, because I was there definitely big time, is they have to start questioning whether or not it's real or not, right? I mean, I always find it interesting because even though many of us live in kind of a bubble, right, an information bubble uh, with the people that we surround ourselves with, their level of education, their level of awareness, their level of knowledge of the way things work in the world, how they actually operate. What's unfortunate about that is that a person has very much the ability to shut their mind off to the way other people are living in the world. And also to actually think we can't live the way other people do. I don't know how many people I've worked with over 25 years and actually had conversations with about the idea that they're stuck at the level that they're currently experiencing without ever considering other people that are doing whatever they want with their life. It's as if they look like those people came in from another planet or something and that they can't do the same thing they see those other individuals doing. I mean, it really does not click in their mind that whatever they're doing, they can also do because they have so many reasons why they can't. And those reasons are attached to their identity. Their identity is attached to the safety of the community in which they find themselves. And they say stuck within the rules of that community. God help them if they break those rules. That's usually the way that it goes. But every so often, Somebody will sit back and go, wait a second, is this really true? Or they'll start to see where people make up stories that are actually not true, and they have enough curiosity to begin to slightly disagree with the people around them. That begins to open up a door because then they can start asking questions. And when they ask those questions, they're asking themselves, is this really true? Does it really have to be this way? Isn't there a way that I can take control over my life and create something very different for myself? Generally, those people start attracting to them 
different things and ideas and people and information that cause them to get to the point where they start to accept enough responsibility so the door opens. I remember when I was when I was stuck, when I was when I was young in my 20s, I was so stuck. I was just stuck beyond stuck. And I kept thinking to myself, there's no way for me to get out of the situation that I'm in because the only way out is through a college education and enough time and money to be able to actually do that. And of course, I was working six and a half days a week. I was trying to support a family, which I was failing at absolutely terribly. And I thought, there's, I don't know how to get out of this. I don't know how to get out of this box. Because I was seeing myself as a victim through that lens, I didn't realize the door was right in front of me. And then by one night of considering something different, I started to change my beliefs about things basically changing my attitude. I started seeing the good in things. And as I started to see the good in things, all of a sudden the door swung wide open and my life literally changed in 30 days, completely changed in 30 days. And that started me on a process of going, what is actually going on? Now, I still didn't accept 100% responsibility for myself, but I, I began to over time when I began to actually learn what those principles are. So the idea is that you have to ask yourself the question, is what you're experiencing, does it have to mean the meaning that you're giving it? Now, let's talk about how the idea of that meaning creates the environment and the reality that you're actually in. If you look at all of the things, right? I've got a microphone here. I've got an iPhone here. I've got a bottle of water over here. I got a background here. You're looking at me through a camera, through a video. When humans first stepped on this planet, none of this stuff existed. Well, where the hell did it all come from? It came from the imagination of people that wanted something different in their life. People realized whether they called it that or not, I have no idea. But they could actually build an image. They could build a dream in, in their imagination of something that they wanted to be different. And then they began to work that out in their, in their physical life, literally creating things different. See, all the knowledge that ever was or ever will be is 100% present in all places at the same time. And it's always been here, right? The way to do the things technologically that we can do today existed hundreds of millions of years ago. It's just that people weren't aware of them. So we advance in society and we detract by the level of our awareness. The more aware we become of something, the more we move forward. The less aware we become of something, the more we move backward. And we do that. It's a constant struggle back and forth for people. But if you sit around and you think to yourself, the world is happening to me, then you, then you, you lack the realization that you have the power to actually change it. But if you stop and go, wait, if this person can do it, if all these other people can do it, what is it that they might know that I don't know yet? And what they know is that they have the power to change the way that they're having an experience. In other words, ask yourself, why do the things that are in your life? Say, if, say there's things that are going wrong, things that you don't like, or even things in the world. Why do they have to mean what everybody says they mean? Forget everybody. Why do they have to mean what you say that they mean? How could it possibly change your experience to change your meaning? Here's a great place to start. What if every problem, every trouble that you have in your life, instead of going into self-pity and blaming other people, you stepped into gratitude? What if you said, I'm going to change the meaning of all these things that are going wrong instead of mistakes or error or bad choices or bad people or bad things, there are going to be lessons for me. And I'm going to be grateful for the lesson. Do you know, just like that, in that moment, you'll start to be able to see something different within your unique experience? Why is that? Because both sides of an idea exist at the same time. You can't have one side of something without the other. If something's bad, there must be something good about it. Everything in the universe, both material and immaterial, has an opposite side to it. But we can only see the side that's the equivalent of our level of consciousness. If we change our consciousness, we can see things that have been there the whole time. 
that we have just not been able to recognize. Do you know that success is one of those things? Whatever success you want in your life, it's not that it's not there. And it's not that it's not there for you. It's 100% there for you and everybody else. But if you're not programmed to see it as a child, if you're raised in a dysfunctional household or a dysfunctional community that is blaming everybody and everything else, you're not seeing the side that'll open the door and let you out. You're only seeing why you're trapped. And as long as the problem that you're experiencing is somebody else's fault, you don't hold the power to change it. But the moment that you're grateful for it, and you actually accept responsibility, and I'm not blaming, it's not about blame, it's about ownership. You can own your experience even if somebody else does something else, whether it's good or bad. I'm going to learn a lesson from everything in my life because the opposite side of what I don't like is something that's good. And if I focus on what's good, I will open the door. I will open a new path for my life. Now, as you begin to do this, you're going to have to, you're going to, have to realize something very important. What is the supportive structure of the environment that you're in? Most of us, when we first begin to change, we realize um, to our horror sometimes that the people that we're around want no part of it. Absolutely none. And that can be both devastating and uh, sad um, and unmotivating because we don't know what to do with that. Here we are, we start to find something different. We start to break out. And not only do other people not want anything to do with it, in in a very big way, they feel threatened by it. So they don't have the ability to support where you want to go. Now, I'm not saying that you have to leave those people, although I do encourage people to definitely do something about toxic or abusive environments that they might be in. But the idea would be, can you start to build a base of people that are thinking differently, that are going in the direction that you want to go? And you start to hang with them and talk with them and share with them and learn from each other's wins instead of each other's mistakes. Do you know how much faster you will grow if you're in an environment that does that? It will be extremely fast because part of the problem is that let's say you're reading a book or you're watching this podcast or or you're learning from whoever. When you shut it off, when you close the lid on your computer, when you shut your phone off for the day, you're still in the same environment. And that environment is either encouraging you to be better or it's discouraging everything that you truly want. That part is your choice. You have to seek out the support that you need to help you go in the direction that you want. If you want to reach out to us and find out more about stuff that you could, we we could help you support with, with what we do. We're happy to do that. But even if it isn't us, find somebody, find a group somewhere, find a, a person, a friend, a mentor, a coach, somebody that can help you walk down the path that you really want to walk. Look, you're not watching this video for no reason at all. If you had no questions in your mind and you were completely shut out to everything, you wouldn't have even turned this thing on. The fact that you're watching it means that you want something. The fact that you're watching it means that you've got something big to do in this world. So whatever step or level that you are, there's always another one. Remember that your perception controls your reality, and your reality is your experience. Change your perception, and you'll change your experience. Have a great day. 